I sprinkle these twice a week in the summer, at least, <coughs> just a little bit of water, keep them damp. I can tell how damp they are by how wet the lids are. See these lids here have dry spots on them, so they're a little bit dry, so I can water them a little bit. Not a whole lot. The value of worm castings is tremendous. They <coughs> the uh, worm worm castings used as a fertilizer for plants uh, excites the plant's immune system and makes the cell walls of the leaves thicker, so they resist insects penetration and they don't like they're a miracle cure for the white fly problem with hibiscus and uh, morning glories and uh, xylosma any plant that gets white flies uh, the worm worm castings as fertilizer on those plants in a few months the the white flies are gone and and, and making a, a compost tea out of worm compost <coughs> uh, in, it infuses the tea with antibiotic and an antifungal properties that are better than any pesticide. I don't know if, if you noticed but there wasn't any offensive odor or anything when I took the lids off and uh, there were a few flies, but not that many. You know, it isn't like they choked you when I opened the lid up and the flies flew out. So they're really, a worm box doesn't have to be <coughs> smelly or fly ridden at all. And these get a lot of garbage. And it just smells like dirt. The uh, bedding has, uh, coir, the ground up coconut fiber, and uh, straw and paper sometimes is the original bedding a couple inches deep af after all the old compost has been harvested. And then it's just food and something to cover it a little bit like straw or shredded paper. Any source of calcium is good. I add a little bit of uh, oyster shells, crushed oyster shells once in a while to keep the pH high. Worms don't like uh, acid, so a little bit of calcium, a source of calcium. Uh, Eggshells are good, or oyster shells and bones. So those will dissolve in a worm box eventually. The, the uh, bones, I pick the bones out when I harvest the worm compost and I put them back in the, the a, a part of the box that's being used. So they eventually uh, dissolve. It's real easy to tell if you have mice or rats in your worm box because there'll be a nice little pile of worm castings where they're building their nest. <clears throat> but they can be kept out. You just It's just a matter of thinking of every way they can get in. There's a little, there's a wire, uh, like a har hardware cloth on the bottom of all these because we, we had moles. Moles love worms and there'd just be moles going underneath the worm box and in the worm boxes and <laughs> so I thought well, I, I, I have to keep the moles out too. So there's a little wire on the bottom <coughs> and the edges of the things and then these are nice and tight and if any holes develop I put hardware cloth over it. And, and, and I've learned that half inch hardware cloth even though they're really small little mice can get through that half inch and then they beef up in the worm box they try to get out and they get stuck on their hips so they like get halfway out with their head out and they can't get in they can't get out so 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 now I use quarter inch hardware cloth that keeps everything up <laughs> this is the box that I'm 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 harvesting the worm castings from it right now. So there's a, uh, I do it in quarters, quarter of the box at a time. So this quarter has been harvested. I just rake it all up against the side and then uh, take like a half an inch or an inch off and then rough it up. And the worms 
dive dive down in like 15 or 20 minutes and then you can take another half inch layer off it's pretty tedious you have to just take skim a layer off and then wait for the worm to dive down and skim another layer off and wait for him to dive down it's exciting to come out here and open the door to the worm box and see hundreds of worms crawling around on top and the whole box kind of vibrates with them and then in 20 seconds they're all gone you see how here there's no worms at all showing anymore they hide from light as soon as they're exposed they just get out of the way this will be the next next quadrant it still has a lot of worms in it I've been feeding it you can see there's just a lot of worms at the top but underneath it's it's uh, old compost this is about a, a year and a half old here's a good one underneath uh, onions they seem to congregate a lot but the worms love onions and uh, what else do they love? Well, fruits. They love fruit, potatoes. They love avocados, but not the skin and not the seed. Just like us. Anytime there's an onion there, you can pick it up and there's a blob of worms underneath it. This worm box was harvested and rebedded about three months ago, so it's a lot lower. There isn't as much compost in it. And the worms in it, there's a lot of worms in here. And there, uh, they're a lot happier when they have new bedding and the old compost isn't really thick. They eat mostly bacteria and fungus that, that's decomposing the organic matter. You never have to empty it out yeah. to get to the compost. The compost just falls down. I just harvested the compost about a month ago and not much has fallen down since, but I got a couple uh, wheelbarrows full, big wheelbarrows full of this after uh, August, November, December, five months. If we look in here when I open the box, it might be, oh yeah, there they are. See, there's just zillions of them in there. See, they're in the food there. You never see that in the ground box. This gets oxygen from the bottom, so these worms are really vibrant and fat. Got a little thermometer in here. It's 78 degrees inside the worm box. And they're persistent, they're uh, reliable, and they, they don't uh, they don't ever ask for anything, you know. It, they're very happy when they get what they like, but you know, they're, they're, they're like a perfect little pet.